Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to the little Martian colony that I built right here in the game known as Surviving Mars. This game has uh, been around for just over a year I believe and I did a little playthrough of this I think about a year ago as well where I actually failed miserably. And since then I was able to recreate another colony that was much more successful with quite a lot of colonies here and a lot of stuff going on. But eventually I kind of abandoned this because basically I've achieved everything I wanted to achieve even though um, it was super fun. But before you start thinking, oh no, this is another playthrough and or sponsored video, it's not, it's really not. Although I really wish it was. Paradox, if you're listening, like why don't you want to sponsor a video? It's about Mars. Anyway. Let's get to what we're really talking about. And one of the main reasons I decided to make a video uh, starting with this game is because very recently Paradox released an update known as Green Planet where you get to terraform Mars using relatively realistic techniques. Um, one of those techniques involves uh, building a kind of a false magnetosphere around Mars. And another technique involves this, uh, pumping a lot of different materials into the atmosphere, trying to build up a, um, an atmosphere of Mars, and then you'll get trees and stuff like that. But anyway, that's not really a sponsored video, neither is it a promotion of this game, but I really wanted to include this because it's there and it's kind of fun to play. What we are talking about though is a very cool competition that was just won by this startup that literally blew my mind. This is a startup known as AI Space Factory that has recently won a NASA award um, for 3D printing completely autonomously an actual habitat that would be perfect for Mars. In other words, they were literally able to 3D print an actual housing that can then be used on Mars from materials that can be created on Mars. And the fact that they were able to do it in three days is just mind blowing. So let me go through some of the details here because that's really what this video is about. Although I secretly wish it was about the game and I kind of want to play it, to be honest. But anyway, so this particular startup created this autonomous and tremendously large 3D printer that you can see on the screen right here that has a very interesting um, printing technique where it's able to create an actual structure by 3D printing it using a mixture of PLA, which is basically what the uh, typical print 3D printers use today. I actually have a lot of this lying around because I used to teach design and I, I used to 3D print all the time. But at the same time, it's one of the most widely available, I guess you can call them plastics, but they're technically recyclable and also environmentally friendly plastics. Um, and they decided to mix this with the materials that can be easily found on Mars. Now here is how it looked like during the competition. There were actually uh, two different startups competing for the best prize. But in this particular case, um, what they had to do is use an autonomous robot. Basically, you are not allowed to, to touch anything here. This All of this had to be done um, either remotely or through an automated process, although you could technically control it using a computer, but you're not allowed to see what's going on. And at the same time, it had to be done using materials that could be produced on Mars. So in this case, they used a kind of a mixture of basaltic rock that can be extracted from Mars and PLA that um, is technically a biodegradable plastic that could be produced from, from plants growing on Mars. So altogether, this would technically allow us to produce all of this material on site. So um, if this robot were to go to Mars, it would then most likely be able to produce all of these uh, components on site using remote techniques. And this was exactly what uh, this particular event was trying to simulate and demonstrate. Now there were, like I said, two competitors. They both were able to finish uh, the construction of these um, habitats. But one of the major last tests that had to be passed was being squished by this thing. Um, it was essentially a kind of a stability test where the excavator would push down on the habitat and um, will basically see if it survives the pressure. And only this habitat survived and it was so stable and so strong that it actually took a lot of effort to try to disassemble it afterwards in order to transport it back to the facility where it came from. So what they've created is absolutely mind blowing. It's extremely strong. It's relatively easy to produce. And even though this was the initial prototype, this is kind of what they're aiming to create, a kind of a miniature colony slash 
Martian city, completely automated, completely autonomous and ready for human inhabitants. Their design is also unique in that it uses a kind of a double shell structure. So this is the actual habitat and this is more of a uh, shell that protects everything from anything from micrometeorites to obviously things like Martian storms and of course uh, potential uh, Mars quakes. But most importantly, um, they've also tested this for protection from radiation and apparently because of the structure and the design, it does protect uh, people living inside from the cosmic radiation on Mars. Not perfectly, but a lot better than other habitats. So this is basically the summary of their habitat. As you can see, it's uh, extremely well made and very well designed. And um, because of this, obviously NASA was really excited to award, I think it's half a million dollars to them to continue the research and to hopefully one day be able to create something even more stable. But right now their actual next plan is to create this right here on Earth in the project that they're referring to as Terra because they want to actually showcase this to everyone. This right now is the only picture that's available on the website. But the idea here is that they're going to use a very similar technique to create these on Earth and potentially even turn these into some kind of superstructures here on Earth as well, where you can literally build an entire miniature city completely 3D printed very, very quickly. Uh, and by the way, it took them about three days to create that smaller version. So a larger version might take them about a week or so. And these would be obviously relatively cheap to make as well. So it's a pretty awesome idea, um, great design, and most importantly, this would be obviously completely automated and not require a lot of assistance from people and can be done right there on site using the materials that you literally harvest around you. So this is probably one of the best news we've had so far about uh, basically Martian colonization because there hasn't really been a lot of news uh, lately and um, not much has been done in terms of trying to create anything there other than of course the probes that we're sending. So if one day we want to have something like this, just like in Surviving Mars, and we want to be able to create something that's uh, obviously friendly for human life, but also something that's not too expensive, something that's um, actually feasible, and most importantly, something that will protect us from a lot of hazards of Mars, this particular competition and the fact that AI Space Factory was able to win it is actually great news because um, being able to create these habitats was a huge challenge and if they can actually pull it off and if they get all the funding needed to continue their mission then the next step would obviously be uh, well sending all of this equipment to mars and beginning the actual mission now hopefully uh, at some point elon musk hears about this and possibly contacts them and maybe even uh, gets their equipment onto his rockets and sends them to mars but for now, I guess all we can do is just wait and see what this particular startup comes up with. Their website, by the way, is in the description below. And maybe, just maybe, uh, we'll also hear back from NASA and hear back from them on what their plans are and how they're going to integrate all of this into the mission to Mars. But until we hear back from NASA and until there is some other development in regards to the actual mission to Mars, check out Surviving Mars because this is the closest we'll get so far to actually building a realistic colony on the surface of this beautiful planet. Uh, Surviving so Mars is surprisingly realistic, it has a lot of real science going on here, and uh, it's actually fun. And now that you can actually terraform Mars, it makes it even more interesting and more challenging. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn more about science and space through video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.